Hi Year 3, um, welcome to Storytime. I'm going to carry on with Matilda. So just as a recap, uh, Mr Wormwood is telling us all about he um, about how he cheats people into buying cars that um, look like they've done less miles than what they've actually done. Every single car that comes through my hands gets the treatment, the father said. They all have their mileage cut to under 10th hour before they're offered for sale. And to think I invented that all by myself, he added proudly, this made me a mint. Matilda, who had been listening closely, said, but daddy, that's even more dishonest than sawdust. It's disgusting. You're cheating people who trust you. If you don't like it, then don't eat the food in this house, the father said. It's bought with the profits. It's dirty money, Matilda said. I hate it. Two red spots appear on the father's cheeks. Who the heck do you think you are? He shouted. The Archbishop of Canterbury or something? Preaching to me about honesty? You're just an ignorant little squirt who hasn't got the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Quite right, Harry, the mother said. And to Matilda she said, You've got a nerve talking to your father like that. Now keep your nasty mouth shut so we can all watch this programme in peace. They were in the living room eating their suppers on their knees in front of the telly. The suppers were TV dinners in floppy aluminium containers with separate compartments for the stewed meat, the boiled potatoes and the peas. Mrs Wormwood sat munching her meal with her eyes glued to the American soap opera on the screen. She was a large woman whose hair was dyed platinum blonde, except when you could see the mousy brown Brits bits growing from the roots. She wore heavy makeup and she had one of those unfortunate bulging figures where the flesh appears to be strapped in all around the body to prevent it from falling out. Mummy, Matilda said, would you mind if I ate my supper in the dining room so I could read my book? The father glanced up sharply. I would mind, he snapped. Supper is a family gathering and no one leaves the table till it's over. But we're not at the table, Matilda said. We never are. We're always eating off our knees and watching the telly. And what's wrong with watching the telly, may I ask? The father said. His voice had suddenly become quite dangerous. Matilda didn't trust herself to answer him, so she kept quite quiet. She could feel the anger boiling up inside her. She knew it was wrong to hate her parents like this, but she was finding it so hard not to do so. All the reading she had done had given her a view of life that they had never seen. If only she would read a Dickens or Kipling and they would soon discover there was more to life than cheating people and watching television. Another thing, she resented being told constantly that she was ignorant and stupid when she knew that she wasn't. The anger inside of her went on boiling and boiling and she lay in bed that night and she made a decision. She decided that every time her father or mother was beastly to her, she would get her own back in one way or another. A small victory or two would help her to tolerate their idiocies and would stop her from going crazy. You must remember that she was still hardly five years old and it's not easy for someone as small as that to score points against an all-powerful grown-up. Even so, she was determined to have a go. Her father, after what had happened in front of the telly that evening, was the first on her list. Okay, well now we're moving on to the hat and the superglue. It's a very funny chapter. The following morning, just before her father left for his beastly second-hand car garage, Matilda slipped into the cloakroom and got hold of the hat that he wore each day to work. She had to stand on her toes and reach up as high as she could with a walking stick in order to hook off the hat from the peg. And even then, she only just made it. The hat itself was one of those flat-topped pork pie jobs with a jay's feather stuck to the hat band and Mr Wormwood was very proud of it. He thought it gave him a, a rakish daring look, especially when he wore it at an angle with his loud checkered jacket and green tie. Matilda, holding the hat in one hand and a thin tube of superglue in the other hand, 
proceeded to squeeze a line of glue very neatly all around the inside rim of the hat. Then she carefully hooked the hat back onto the peg within, with the walking stick. She timed this operation very carefully, applying the glue just as her father was getting up from the breakfast table. Mr Wormwood didn't notice anything when he put the hat on, but when he arrived at the garage, he couldn't get it off. Super glue is very powerful stuff. So powerful that it'll take your skin off if you pull it too hard. Mr Wormwood didn't want to be scalped, so he had to keep his hat on his head the whole day long even when putting sawdust in gear boxes and fiddling the mileages of cars with his electric gel. In an effort to save face, he adopted a casual attitude, hoping that his staff would think that he actually meant to keep his hat on all day, just for the heck of it, like gangsters do in the films. When he got home that evening, he still couldn't get the hat off. Don't be silly, your wife said. Come here, I'll get it off for you. She gave the hat a sharp yank. Mr. Murmured let out a yell that rattled the window panes. Ow! He screamed. Don't do that! Let go! You'll take half of my skin off my forehead! Matilda, nestling in her usual chair, was watching this performance over the rim of her book with some interest. What's the matter, Daddy? She said. Has your head suddenly swollen or something? Her father glared at his daughter deep with deep suspicion, but said nothing. How could he? Mrs. Wormham said to him, It must be super glue. It couldn't be anything else. That'll teach you to go playing around with nasty stuff like that. I expect you are trying to stick another feather in your hat. I haven't touched the flaming stuff, Mr. Wormham shouted. He turned and looked again at Matilda, who looked back at him with large, innocent brown eyes. Mrs. Wormund said to him, You should read the label on the tube before you start messing around with dangerous products. Always follow the instructions on the label. What in heaven's name are you talking about, you stupid witch? Mr. Wormund shouted, clutching the brim of his hat to stop anyone trying to pull it off him again. Do you think I'm stupid? Stupid enough to glue this thing to my head on purpose? Matilda said, down the road, there is a boy who got some super glue on his finger without knowing it, and then he put his finger up his nose. Mr. Wormwood jumped. What happened to him? He spluttered. The finger got stuck inside his nose, Matilda said, and then he had to go around like that for a week. People kept saying to him, stop picking your nose, and he couldn't do anything about it. He looked like an awful fool. Served him right, Mrs. Wormwood said. He shouldn't have put his finger up there in the first place. It's a nasty habit. If all children had super glue put on their fingers, they'd soon stop doing it. Matilda said, Grown-ups do it too, Mummy. I saw you doing it yesterday in the kitchen. Quite enough from you, said Mrs. Wormwood, as she was turning pink. Mr. Wormwood had to keep his hat on all through... Um, supper in front of the television. He looked ridiculous and he stayed very silent. When he went up to bed he tried again to get the thing off and so did his wife but it wouldn't budge. How am I going to have my shower? he demanded. You'll just have to do without it won't you? his wife told him. And later on as she watched her skinny little husband skulking around the bedroom in his purple striped pyjamas with a pork pie hat on his head, she thought how stupid he looked. Hardly the kind of man that wives dream about, she told herself. Mr. Wormer discovered that the worst thing about having a permanent hat on his head was having to sleep on it. It was impossible to lie comfortably on the pillow. Now do stop fussing around, his wife said to him after he'd been tossing and turning for about an hour. I expect it will be loose by the morning and it'll slip off easily. But it wasn't loose by the morning and it wouldn't slip off. So Mrs. Wormwood took a pair of scissors and cut the thing off his head bit by bit. First at the top, then at the brim. Where the inner band had stuck all around his hair back and sides, she had to chop the hair right off to the skin so that it finished with a bald white ring around his head like some sort of monk. 
and in the front, where the band had stuck directly to the bare skin, there remained a whole lot of small patches of brown leathery stuff that no amount of washing could get off. Okay, we're going to stop there for today. Hope you enjoyed it, children.